Okay, so here we have the exponential function f of x equals 2 to the x. And here is a quick sketch of the graph of y equals 2 to the x. From looking at the graph, we see that it passes the horizontal line test, so this function here is 1 to 1. Since it's 1 to 1, it has an inverse. Okay, it has an inverse function. The inverse of this function here is called the logarithm with base 2 of x. Okay, and the way that's written is this log subscript of 2, the x. So you read that as the logarithm with base 2 of x. Okay, now since this function is the inverse of this function, the inputs of the logarithm are the outputs of the exponential. So for example, log base 2 of 8. 8, the number 8, since it's the input of log base 2 of x, 8 is the output of 2 to the x. So the value of log base 2 of 8 is the number to which 2 must be raised so that 8 is the answer. Okay, so 8 is the output of 2 to the x, and what comes out of the log is the input that was needed to produce it. So 2 to what power is 8? We know that 2 cubed is 8. So that means that the log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. Okay, let's do this one. 4 is the output of 2 to the x. So the answer to this is to which power we need to raise 2 to get 4 as the answer. The answer to that is 2 because 2 squared is 4. Okay, let me give you a couple to work on. Okay, press pause while you work on these four. Okay, for the first one you should have gotten 4 since 2 raised to the 4th power is 16. Here, 2 raised to the 1st power is 2. 2 raised to the 0 power is 1. And 2 raised to the negative 1 power is 1 half. Okay, so you see that to evaluate logarithms, you need to be thinking backwards. It's the exponent to which this number needs to be raised to get this answer. Okay, more generally speaking, y equals log base a of x, which is the logarithmic function with base a of x, is the inverse of the exponential function y equals a to the x. As in the case of exponential functions, we need a to be greater than 0 and to not be equal to 1. Okay, so that still holds with logarithmic functions because the base of the exponential is the exact same a in the logarithm. Okay, so let me just show you a couple of concrete examples. Write the inverse of f of x equals 3 to the x. Well, the inverse of this is just the logarithm with base 3 of x. Okay, I'm going to give you a few to write the inverses of. Okay, press pause while you work on these. Okay, so this is what you should have gotten. So the logarithm just has the same base as the exponential function. So this has, the first one has base 1 half, base 6, C, it's the log logarithm with base 10. Okay, so this one has a special name and it's called the, the common logarithm. And rather than putting a sub 10, we suppress it and just write log x. So from now on, instead of writing log base 10 of x, write log of x. And in your mind, think of a little 10 down here. Okay, so this is called the common logarithm. Okay, the last one. So log base e of x. Again, instead of writing log base e of x, we write ln of x. So just like e to the x is called the natural exponential function, ln of x is called the natural logarithmic function. Or we just sometimes say the natural log of x. 
Okay, so these last two logarithms, those are the ones that are um, on your calculator, so you can actually use your calculator to evaluate the log of a number or the natural log of a number. Okay, here's a useful way to think about logarithms, and this is because the logarithm is the inverse of the exponential. So log base a of x is equal to k if and only if a to the k is x. Okay, so a to the k equals x. Okay, so this is called the logarithm form, or the logarithmic form, and this is called the exponential form. These two things are saying the exact same thing. Okay, so let's use this statement here to evaluate some logarithms. Okay, in the first case, log base 3 of 9, we say, to what power do we need to raise 3 so that 9 is our answer? And the answer to that question is 2, so log base 3 of 9 is 2. Now, to what power do we need to raise 1 half to get 1 eighth as our answer? The answer to that question is 3. So log base 1 half of 1 eighth is equal to 3. Okay, I'll give you some more to try. Okay, press pause while you work on these three. Okay, you should have gotten two, negative two, and three. Okay, the last one, because we picture a little sub 10 down here, 10 cubed is 1,000, 5 squared is 25, and 4 raised to the negative 2 power is 1 over 4 squared, and that's 1 over 16. So anytime your base is a whole number and your input is a fraction, the answer is going to be a negative number because the only way you can go from a whole number to a fraction is by using a negative exponent. Okay, let me just give you one more. The natural log of e to the negative 8 power. Think about that one for a second. Okay, the answer to this is negative 8. So you need to imagine a little e down there. And so you say e raised to what power is e to the negative 8? e to the negative 8 is e to the negative 8. So the natural log of e to the negative 8 is just negative 8. And another way to think of that is that you're applying a function and then you're applying the inverse of that function. And we know that a function followed by its inverse just gives us what we started with. Okay, let's talk about the domain and range now. So there are a couple of ways to think about the domain of, what, of f of x equals log base a of x. The first way to think about it is that the domain of this is equal to the range of a to the x. And that's because this is the inverse of a to the x. We know that the range of a to the x is everything greater than 0. So it means that the domain here is everything greater than 0. Um, another way to think of it is the way you think about logarithms. So a raised to what power is x? This cannot be a negative number because a raised to any power never gives you a negative answer because a itself can't be negative. So a positive number raised to any power never gives you a negative number. So this, and likewise, a positive number raised to any power never gives you zero. So it means x here has to be greater than zero. For the range, the range is negative infinity to infinity. That's because a can be raised to any power that we want, and we'll always get some value that's something be, uh, greater than 0. Okay, the other way to think about it is that the range of log base a of x is the domain of a to the x. The domain of a to the x is negative infinity, comma infinity.